Marriage is one of God's most wonderful and priceless gifts to humanity. It's a treasure worth keeping, cherishing, working on and sustaining. His instructions and guidelines for marriage are forever valid. Marriage is based on God's instruction, not how you feel. Therefore, you should not get married just because you feel like it, but because God is leading you in that direction. When you purchase a new gadget or appliance, you will usually find a manual booklet in the box that contains information about the gadget or appliance and how to assemble, use, maintain and take care of it. You will find steps to make the most out of it in the booklet. Of course, most times, many people do not bother going through the instruction or manual. They just put the item together and use it the best they can. Sometimes it works well, at other times it does not. When it does not work well, you will have to go back and read the manual to know how to correct the mistake you have made. But do you know that the mistake made while using the item without reading the manual is avoidable? This also applies to marriage. The manual and guide for a successful marriage are with God. You can only have a blissful marriage when you follow his instruction. You should stop when he asks you to. Get ready when he says so and move only when he asks you to go. If you fail to obey God's instruction concerning marriage, you can never be successful in it. If you go into marriage because you are tired of being single and not because God asks you to go, you will end up regretting your disobedience to God's instruction. Singlehood is a state of being single and unmarried. It has chiefly been defined as the state of being unmarried, but most people now use it to refer to not being in a long-term romantic relationship. While many people are single due to a divorce, because they have decided to stay away from long-term committed relationships, or because they have delayed marriage, therefore singlehood includes people who have never been married, as well as people who are separated, or divorced, or widowed. There is a mindset in society that makes single feel that they have a problem or are cursed. Nothing can be further from the truth. There are a lot of blessings in being single, therefore you should enjoy your singlehood. Except you are not planning to get married. Singlehood is a phase that will not last long. You will not be single forever, that's why you should make the most out of your singlehood before you get married. God is aware of this phase of your life that you are in, and for every phase there is a purpose for it. You might feel lonely during this period, but it's all for a reason. Before rushing to get married, ask yourself this simple question. What have I done with my single days? What you accomplished while you were single? Are you maximizing your singlehood? Singlehood is a time to discover yourself, find your purpose, find God, build a solid relationship with Him and prepare for marriage. Many singles consider being single as a curse, but that is not true because being single is a blessing. You might feel lonely at times, but there are so many advantages to being single. One of the blessings of being single is that you have all your time to yourself. You can do whatever you like and whenever you like. You can choose to go on trips, vacations and retreat all by yourself without worrying about another person because at this stage of life, the focus is on becoming the best version of yourself and having a relationship with God. There is so much freedom that comes with being single. You have all time to yourself while single, but once you get married, you are bound to your husband or wife. You will have someone else to be responsible for. While you are single, you can move around and take steps without being bound by anyone, but when you marry, you cannot go anywhere and do anything you like without permission from your spouse. As believers, we should give our all to God in every phase of our lives. However, singlehood is a period where you can give God your all and serve Him without constraint. When you are single, you have more freedom to serve as you desire than the married person. When you get married, you no longer have rules and authority over your body. Your partner does. You might have desires in your heart to do something, but cannot do it unless your spouse consents to it. A married person is bound to the things of the world, but when you're single, you are young and useful for the work of God. This is not to say a married person is not useful to God, but it means they can only do as much as their partner consents to. 
When two people are joined in holy matrimony, they become one and whatever they do, they must do it together. This is one of the reasons it's important to let God lead you to the right person, so you do not end up making costly mistakes that can change the course of your life. So, now that you're single, make the most out of it and serve God with the whole of your might and strength. Use your time, energy and the freedom you have for God. Now you have more time and freedom to fulfill your destiny. You have all that you need to pursue your career and your God-given assignment passionately without any constraint. A time is coming when you will not be able to do something because of age and other responsibilities that you have attended to. Use your singlehood to fulfill the visions of your heart. When you're single, you can focus better. You will have little or no distractions when carrying out your assignment. You also have a lot of time to make mistakes and learn from them. At this phase, it's easier to learn, relearn and unlearn. There is so much to learn while single. You learn and discover yourself and your purpose. You learn about God and His ways. You also learn and prepare for marriage. Singlehood is a definer of your marriage. How you spend your single determines several things in your marriage. Your singlehood is a training ground for marriage. It is when you're single that God trains and prepares you for marriage. How well you yield to God's training in your singlehood will affect and determine how well you will succeed in marriage. Now you see singlehood is not a period to spend doing nothing. Find greater satisfaction in God no matter how long the season of singleness lasts. Many singles do not know the blessing and privileges that they are enjoying in their singlehood. They just love the glaring appearance of marriage and the emotional aspect of it but do not realize that marriage is a place of bondage, especially for women because they are expected to submit to their husbands. Many do not understand what the word submit means, to be a slave, so if you are not ready to be a slave as a woman, you are not ready for marriage in any way. You should be ready to give up everything for the man and also as the man, you should be ready to give up everything for the woman. It is a place of bondage. When you marry, you will no more be free to do what you love to do. Now as a single person, you can go out of the home anytime and come back by past 10 at night. You enjoy that freedom just to do what you like, but when you marry, that is prohibited. Before you go anywhere, you will have to tell your wife and it is until she is fine with it, that is when you can go out. So instead of fighting for the will of God and a person or struggling to know when you will marry, the privileges you're enjoying as a bachelor or a single person, you should use the best of it because when you marry, those privileges are cut off from you. When you marry, you will realize that marriage is not what you think or what you watched in the movies where a man just hugs his wife and every day they're kissing and they're having sexual interaction. You will later find out that marriage has to do with a lot of extra things that are never shown in your favorite soap opera like courage and sacrifice. Now that you are single and you can do things for yourself, you are enjoying it. But when you marry, you are no more one person, but you are living for two, you and your wife. Whatever affects your wife affects you and whatever affects you will also affect her. You are chained to your wife, not for a while, but forever. Before you begin to think about marriage and rush into it, while you're waiting for God to say, go enjoy your singlehood.